Okay, so we're dealing with an active low SR flip-flop. There's a rule which we're going to follow. In fact, there's a couple of rules. Rule number one, make sure that when you're doing this, you look at the initial state to begin with. And we plot this out on our circuit one, zero, zero, one, just like this. So actually, <laughs> we've done that, great. R changes to one. Let me just move this slightly this way. Okay, so R changes to one. So we've made a change on R. Remember that, R, there's a change, change for R. So if we do this, and we've got a one here. Which one did I say changed? It was R. So what we do is we need to feed R the new input. And it comes from Q. So we're gonna get to zero, we're gonna follow this line. And zero pops up here now. So that zero comes here. One, nan zero gives us one. So this doesn't change. Now we feed this one to this gate, to S. So you go up. Do, 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 do. So you put a one here, that one goes there. One, now one gives us zero. So in our table, Q is zero, not Q is one. Let's just erase. So we have now S is changing to zero. So S is the one that's changed, not R this time. So how does that work? Well, as it's S, which is changing potentially the outputs, we're going to pass not Q, as in one, to here. So we've got zero and one, which gives us, for NAND gate, a one. That one now travels along this line to here. So we've got one, and we've got R, which is one. That gives us zero. One and one. There we go. Uh oh. S has changed again. S is now zero. So S is now one. So we're doing this one. Really simple. As is S, which has changed. Let me just erase all of this stuff because we're going to start this bit again got one here, we've got a one here, S has changed so it's this zero which gets passed up to here. One and zero gives us one. That one travels down, one and one gives us zero. And there we go, this is the truth table for a NAND SR flip-flop. It is always going to be the same. What I've done is I've just shown you how to trace it through. So remember, rule. Put in the initial state to begin with. Then work out what's changed, which in the first case was one here. So we then need to feed that change the complement output. Then we calculate, we change the other output, which then feeds back into the other input to then create our new final state. Okay, we will come back to this because we're going to try one for an active high, but not yet. Let's do another type of question. What's the problem with this? Well, here's the thing. Q and not Q have the same value which creates an unstable state as Q and not Q have to be complements of each other, have to be complements, i.e. one, zero, or zero, one. They can't be the same in terms of both being zero. So zero, zero is our unstable state. Let's have a look at JK. 
Okay, so now we're dealing with a JK flip-flop, and you might think, oh my gosh, this looks so complicated, but it's not. You do need to be aware of how to do a free input NAND gate. So for a NAND gate, the only time it's going to give us a zero is if every input is one, otherwise it's always going to be a one as our output. So we know what this is. This is SR flip-flop. It works the same as what we've looked at before. <coughs> but we've now got, <coughs> excuse me, a clock, a J and a K. Let's look at this first one. J is one, the clock will be one, and a K is zero. You'll notice the clock has to be a one all the time in order for us to get an output. So one clock has to be active. Our initial state is one and zero. Now the rules for this are slightly different to SR and I'll guide you through the process. To begin with, we know basically that we've got a one here, we've got a zero here, K and J respective. We know that there's a one here and we know that there's a one here. By its very nature, we know that this is gonna be a one no matter what because we've got a zero and a one. It's always gonna give us a one for an AND gate. This could give us a zero or a one depending on this. Well, this is a zero, this zero travels all the way back here. So that gives us a one here, as this one would have traveled or it'll do this, which goes here. So one, zero, one gives us one. I didn't bother doing that because that combination gives us a one anyway, it makes no difference. But just for your reference, again, this goes to here. I'll do X marks the spot and this goes to here. X marks the spot. Okay, so what happens now? This is slightly different to how we did SR flip flop before. With SR flip flop, what we did is we said, okay, whichever input out of S or R changes, we then go and feed it the next number, which would be a one in this case. But not for this. This rule is whatever is active high, or so I say in this case, one, active, so Q is active, we're gonna feed this one to here first. So one NAND one gives us zero. This zero then travels here. One NAND zero gives us one. So that is our first one. So the rule is which one, ever one's active, feeds first. So let's do another situation. Swipe so clean. We've now got J being one, still clock one, K zero, but this is zero, this is one. This clock is one. This is gonna be a, as we've got a zero, we know very well that this is gonna be a one, no matter what. We know that. Now on this side, we've got a one for a clock, a one for a J, and this one gives us zero. Yes, I could have just gone clock one, K, zero, this move this zero, but that's, we know it's a one, there's no point being that. That's the point I'm making. Okay. Now, which one's high? Well, it's not Q, not Q, sends a one here. One and zero gives us one. That one gets fed to here. One and one gives us zero. And there we go. Happy days. Okay, let's do the next one. We've got one, one, one. We've got one zero. So we know that this is a one, we know that this is a one, we know that this clock is a one as well, because remember this clock goes this way and a clock goes that way. So now let's take our Q and not Q data values. So the one travels down here, so that's one, 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 and the zero travels here. 
0 and 1 gives us a 1. 1 and 1 gives us a 0. Active Q. 1 and 0 gives us a 1. This 1 travels here. 1 and 1 give us a 0. So we've got 0, 1. And finally, One 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 zero one. <coughs> well, hello. Thank you. We know that we got one. So zero. Is that no? That is one. One. So that travels all the way over here. One and the clock. One. We know that this is one. We know that this is one, and we know that this is zero from this queue, which travels all the way down here. We know that this will be a 1, we know that this will be a 0, we know that this is not Q is active, not Q then supplies here first. 1 and 0 gives us 1. That 1 travels here, 1 and 1 gives us 0. And there we go, that is the truth table for this JK flip flop. Okay, so we're now looking at an active high flip-flop, so we're dealing with NOR gates, but we go back to the original rule we work with. Step one, in fact, try this yourself first. Pause the video. Okay, step one, initial state, which would be actually, okay, now we've got Remember what the rule was, whatever is changing the input affects everything else. So step one, S changes to zero. So we've got a change of input here. This is the change of the input. Therefore, this one will travel down here first. One nor zero will give us zero. This zero will travel, zero nor zero here will give us one. So we're looking at one zero. R changes to 1, so R is what's changed now. This 0 travels up, 1 nor 0 gives us 0. This 0 travels down, which gives us 1. The change now is R changing again, this time to 0. by R changing to zero, what we've got now is this one being fed, let me just get rid of these. This one's gonna be here. One nor zero gives us zero. This Q passes zero here, zero nor zero gives us one, so it's the same again. And S and R changes to one, which we know gives us as we said previously, that unstable state condition. Again, you'll notice that there is a pattern with this. Same with NAND. Ooh, it's a toggle. So S turning to zero doesn't affect the output. Is when we reset, it changes the output. When we reset goes back to zero, the output still stays the same. So again, imagine you've got a light switch, which you press once, the light goes on, but the light switch pops back out again. So it pops back out. So we're gonna do light switch. Yeah, pops back out. The light is still on. So we've got on switch and we've got an off switch. On, off. So we pressed on, light goes on, on then resets back to zero again, and off is zero. We then decide to press one for off, so we turn off the light. My bad, I pissed off the screen, ooh. There you go, so we turn off the light. We push the button once, it goes one, and then it goes back to zero, but the light remains off. 
if we decide to turn on the light again, we push it, it turns on, that resets to zero again, it's done its job, it's a push light. So that's what's going on with this. Look at the pattern again, S is one, S is zero, output's the same. R becomes one, we change the output. R becomes zero, the output stays the same. So the first question here is, JK has three inputs, JK, and what's the third one? Well, the third one is obviously the clock or a pulse. Two problems with SR that JK over turns. Well, SR can create um, unstable or what we call race state conditions. We've seen that before, where it was either both inputs were one or both inputs were zero, depending on if it's active high or active low, which is not allowed. Q and not Q having same value. JK prevents this. and does not allow both Q and not Q to have same value. So we talked about a race state or um, unstable flip-flop, described what it was and that JK prevents this from happening. It doesn't allow them to have the same values well as an SI it could happen. Another is you've got to take into account that flip-flops work when you're putting up a circuit together with multiple different flip-flops and JK well so let me rephrase that you've got to appreciate that inputs to a flip-flop Okay. may not arrive in time so the input for J might not arrive before um, K because in computers things might slow down other things so what will happen is as inputs may arrive at different times The clock will be zero. So a flip flop won't work, it won't activate until the clock is one. So the clock will stay zero until it gets the J and it gets a K input ready to rock and roll. Which means the clock synchronizes. inputs. SR on the other hand doesn't have a clock which means that the timing signals, the inputs can't be synchronized which means that again it could lead to other complications. So JK, clock, clock manages synchronizing signals, means that um, when inputs are arriving at different times it can be managed effectively. Whereas with SR, there's no clock. It receives, if you've got multiple SRs working together, it'll just carry on doing its thing. It won't wait.